definition of faith is it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But as human beings, we do many times walk by sight. And I'm reminded in Romans chapter 4 about the story of, uh, of Abraham. And Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, Paul, in his discourse to the church in Rome, he says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? And I look at Abraham's life, and I, of course, we all know he was called out of Ur, the Chaldees at 75 years old. The Lord told him to separate himself from his family and from his everybody he knew, the economic system he was familiar with, and uh, just separate yourself and come and follow me. And maybe you and I haven't been called to that degree where God has told us to separate from family. Maybe he has. Maybe there's family members we... Uh, it might be detrimental for us to, uh, to be uh, connected to them. But you understand what I'm saying. So then he gets into the aspects of, of faith and works. Because he says in verse 2, For if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. And there are believers that feel the pressure to get things accomplished or do works. And if they don't have that sense of accomplishment that, man, I'm, you know, the proverbial phrase, I'm living for God. If I'm, if I'm not really living for God, then, then they can't accept, Sister Pat, that they're accepted, that they're loved. And Paul says, Abraham, if he were justified by works, and he had something to glory about, but it wasn't going to be before God. Verse 3, for what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham believed that if I separate at 75 years old myself, I obey God and I follow God, then... Uh, all will be well. But right out of the gate, who does he bring with him? Brings his nephew with him. Which proves to me anyway, in my thinking, that he really didn't totally submit himself. And if there's anything in my life tonight, if there's anything in your life tonight that uh, even if it's a, 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 a simple thing, what you would and I would classify as something simple, we need to understand that when God gives us instruction, instruction uh, regarding His command, he, expect a, he expects a full and complete and total surrender. Can anybody say amen? Amen. amen. And so, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And God, in mercy, waited until the situation reached a point, as you read through Genesis 12, 13, and it reached an unbearable situation where him and his nephew just couldn't get along anymore. They were too big, both of them, they had... Lots of possessions, lots of, of servants, etc., etc. You know the story. And it was at that point, once they separated, that the Bible says, Then God said to Abraham, Now lift up your eyes and look. Talked about the sands of the seashore, the stars in the heavens. And I'm convinced that as we progress in these last of the last days, that there are things that may be wearing us down or causing us to be weary in our well-doing that God is going to identify. And as He identifies these things, and it can be the simplest of simplest things. It, you and I have a, a way of justifying our lifestyle, justifying the things we, 
we engage in the things we do, it's very, very easy for us to accept things. And as we walk daily with him, I believe it's important that we start our day by saying to him, is there anything in my life that's not pleasing to you? And I think that's important that we do, in fact, ask that. And so, verse 4, Now unto him that worketh is the reward not reckon, reckoned of grace, but debt. See, when people have a work-based foundation of their relationship with God, they feel that it's more, uh, I'm accomplishing this. So it's not so much I'm doing the will of God, but I'm accomplishing this, and I'm, uh, I have this feeling that I've, I've, I, I've done right. I, I owe God so much, and i, I got to do this, and i got to do that. And when we don't meet our expectations, then we start allowing guilt to come in. And Satan's no fool. He's been dealing with humanity for a real long time. You know, Charles and I were talking at Bible study and talking about fasting. And, and thank you for those that are fasting this week. Uh, doing what you can do. But I said, there's been times and in, in when I had the great intentions, I'm going to fast today. And by noontime, my brain was hurting and my body was hurting. And I, I just said, Thank you, Lord, for the grace you've given me up to this point, and I've blessed my food and ate. And if you haven't done that, then God bless you abundantly. But, you know, there may have been a time in my younger days of walking with the Lord that was like you go on this guilt trip. You failed, you failed. And if you open the door for the adversary to get in, he'll condemn you big time. But the scripture. I'd like to, uh, uh, verse 4, it says, Now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But I want to read this to you in the Passion Translation. It says, Let me use Abraham as an example. It is clear that, humanly speaking, he was the founder of Judaism. What was his experience of being made right with God? Was it by his good works of keeping the law? No. For if, if it was by the things he did, he would have something to boast about, but no one boasts before God. Listen to what the scripture says. Because Abraham believed God's words, his faith transferred God's righteousness into his account. Brother Mike, I, I can't say how much God wants us to understand that we are not righteous and our, our righteousness is all because of him. Amen. When we repented of our sins, when we became, when we were baptized in Jesus' name, when he sealed us with that Holy Spirit of promise, he clothed us with his righteousness. When he sees us, he sees his righteousness. Praise God. And... I don't have to hide from him anymore. I can come boldly before his throne of grace. The things that happen in life, the, the bumps in the road, whatever you want to call them, the situations that come up, um, we should be, our spirit, our faith should be elastic enough that we bounce right back. What was that, what was that tire man there? Who? Michelin man. The Michelin man. He, he would just bounce right back. And I, I and in this time, Sister Pat, that we're living in, it's like <laughs> just give it time. You, you don't know what, what's around the next bend. You don't know what, what what's what is around the next corner. But uh, as, as real as life is, something always seems to come up where it tries to knock you down, tries to get into your spirit, tries to get you discouraged. And uh, in this hour of faith, in this hour of seducing spirits, in this hour where many false Christs are rising up, uh, in this hour of deception, we really need to be able to bounce right back to where we are in our faith. 
even if it means reaching back into our resources of experiences. That's the trick of the devil. He likes us to forget uh, when God provided for me back there or when God healed me back there or when God fought my battles. We, he always tries to get, get us to forget and make us feel the, this weariness about us. And God is saying, wait a minute, I, I, didn't, I didn't bring you this far for you to fail. He's not going to let us fail. The only way we're going to fail is if we want to fail, if we agree to fail. Jesus makes a statement in Matthew chapter 21, in verse 21, he says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not. Jesus, yes, he was God manifested in the flesh, but he was very secure in who he was. He didn't let people deter him from the course that he was going in. He didn't, he didn't care what people talked about him. He didn't care what, 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 they, what they whispered about him. Of course, he knew what they were saying. But he didn't. He, he didn't get upset. He, he didn't get a. He didn't get. He, he wasn't one to get easily offended. I think the only time you really see him get angry is is at the temple when he put the, together that whip and uh, and came after the money changers. And I think sometimes of how people are so concerned with what people say about them. How how are we going to be able to walk with Jesus in this hour? being concerned with what people say about us or feel about us. It's something to think about because if the adversary can establish a beachhead in my life by the way someone looks at me, uh, by the way, whatever, someone, someone says something, uh, then he could very, very easily crush my faith. And Jesus said, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. You know what I believe is a good habit to have? Is where you, you're speaking faith in everything you do. You're speaking faith in, into this. You're speaking faith into that. Whether you feel faith or not, whether you feel spiritual or not, whether you feel good or not, you're speaking faith. Thank you, Lord, for touching my body today. Thank you, Lord, for, for helping me in this situation. Thank you, Lord, for giving me strength. Thank you, Lord, that, that this, this person got in my face. Thank you, Lord, that you can use this to, to maybe get something out of my spirit or out of my heart. Whatever. Because Jesus did not make that statement just he just didn't grab the statement out of the air and throw it out there he said if we say unto the mountain be thou removed and not doubt it would happen so oh, did he really mean a mountain well that's that's up to whatever you whatever your mountain is tonight you can stand there staring at it and feeling crushed or you can speak to it in the name of the lord and even though it's still going to be in front of you, His peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So when I think of, of having the elasticity of faith and being able to, even though I'm, I, I maybe feel crushed under this situation, I know, but I know, but I know in my confidence with God, I'm going to bounce right back up again. He's going to give me the power to bounce right back up again. There are no failures in the kingdom when you're walking by faith and not by sight. You know how they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Well, in this, beauty is in the eye of those that have faith. Mustard seed faith at that. That's all it takes. And so when I understand how Abraham stepped out of Ur of the Chaldees and just started. I don't know how it happened. I'm assuming God's Spirit led him over around this corner or through this valley or wherever he sent him. But Abraham was human. And when you get to, I think, Genesis 15, 16, when Abraham asks him, can Eleazar be, be uh, my servant? And God tells him, no. He, he bounced right back again. In the next chapter, he, 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 he gets compressed again. 
And him and his wife decide to help God out. And then they bounce right back again. That's how our relationship with God is. And what people allow, when people allow the enemy to come in, or what people to come in, or just, just allow their minds to, to, to capture them in a prison of doubt and darkness, they're the ones that quit coming to church. They're the ones that quit praying. They're the ones that quit having faith and believing God. They're the ones that allow external circumstances to deter what God wants them to be and, and who they want them to be. If we are in fact a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, you find me one person right now that's in that state of being in, in royalty when they're walking about, they know they're in royalty. And they let you know they're in royalty. We are king's kids, folks. We're heirs to eternal life. And we can hold our head up high and we can be the people of God that He's called us to be. Especially when He said, nothing can harm us. You say, but pastor, you don't understand what I'm feeling. I don't understand what you're feeling. But He said, nothing will harm us. Praise God. I would rather have God put me in the wine press and squeeze whatever's in me that needs to come out than have Him ignore me and allow me to think I'm saved or allow me to think everything's okay. I would rather Him do what He's got to do. Hello, I want to go to heaven. How about you? Right. And it's better we find that out on this side of the aisle rather than on the other side of the aisle. And Jude chapter 1 beginning at verse 17, and I'm going to read this in the Passion Translation. I believe that the secret of having, if I can say it, elasticized faith, the more you pray in the Holy Ghost, the more you're going to increase in your faith. Yes, faith is added by experience, but more often than not, you can't touch faith, you can't smell faith, you can't see faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is internal. And so if I'm going to have strong faith, then I have to reinforce my spirit with the influence of God's Word, the influence of God's Spirit. And if Jesus said, I believe in Him as the Scripture says, then He told me that if I am thirsty and I come to Him, then out of my belly will flow what? Rivers of living water. That is a source, ladies and gentlemen. That is a source, a very important source. And, you know, even Paul said, I'm, I speak in tongues more than you all. Praying in the Holy Ghost separates your intellect, separates your mind, and you allow the Spirit of God to flow through you and communicate to His eternal Spirit. And yes, you don't know what you're saying a lot of times. I know one man, he, while he's praying in the Holy Ghost, he knows what he's praying about. I haven't arrived there yet. But I pray in the Spirit more often than not. And... If we do that, it's guaranteed that my faith is going to increase and it'll be your guarantee if your faith will increase. And I find in my years of walking in this way that people that do not exercise the Holy Ghost allowing the Spirit, and it's not the talking in tongues or praying in tongues, but that's the evidence that the indwelling Spirit of God is if you allow the Spirit to flow through you as you pray, there is an undergirding, invisible strength that comes upon you, and God is able to add, as I'll read here right now in Jude, verse 17, But you, my delightful loved friends, remember, this is the Passion Translation, remember the prophecies of the apostles of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, they taught you in the last days there will be what? Always be mockers motivated by their own ungodly desires. We are living, folks, 
We are living in a time where the world is being consumed by mockers, ungodly people, ungodly sinners that are following their ungodly desires. And it's just a matter of time before they'll try to, to quench uh, our voices and stop us from pr propagating or, or preaching what we believe is, is the truth. I read one article yesterday or this week that, that said the evidence of this individual, this individual was a journalist, made a statement that uh, got some people upset and the system the, of law uh, sentenced him to 60 days in prison for it. And it's just a matter of time where those things, the article said it ought to be a warning to the United States. I don't know. I don't know when. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I don't want to wait till I'm there and it's knocking on my door before my faith is strong enough to be able to stand in this evil day. They taught you in the last days there will be mockers motivated by their own ungodly desires. These people cause divisions and are followers of their own natural instincts devoid of the life of the Spirit. But you, my, del my delightfully loved friends, listen to what it says, constantly and progressively Build yourself up on the foundation of your most holy faith. How? By praying every moment in the Spirit. Oh, I know there's those things. Sometimes I'm listening to the Word, and I'm doing my thing at home, and, and, and something said, and then and the Spirit of God, and I just yell out in tongues. It just hits you. Boom! Just gushes out. And uh, if you've had the Holy Ghost for any length of time, you, you know what, what that is. And some some manifestations of the Spirit is just, you know, the few and far between, whatever. Don't misunderstand me here tonight. I'm in the book. If you don't pray in the Holy Ghost consistently, you need to study the book. You need to talk to Jesus about it. Because it will set you free. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by what? Yeah. Hearing and hearing by what? Word the Word of God. I can't, I can't have faith without hearing the Word of God. I need to hear the Word of God. I need to hear a lot of the Word of God. And I'm thankful that in, in my position as full-time ministry, I'm able to get in some word every single day. And sometimes I, I know I've got a schedule and I know I've got lots to do, but the word is more important to me. I've got to get the word inside of me. I want God to speak to me. And we're living in that day. Paul said, be not weary in well-doing. Because if... if, if, if if you just keep on going, keep on keeping on, you will reap if you what? Faint not. So if fainting is an option in response to being not weary and well-doing, then guess what? It's an option that's out there. I can grow weary. I, you can grow weary. We've been there. I've been there. You've been there. But it's so, so critical that we bounce back. There's not a person, I believe, that has backslid from the faith that you can ask them, well, do you remember when you decided that you were going to leave the faith and just walk away from it? Usually they can't pinpoint it to a certain uh, event because what happens is it's, it, it manifests itself in time. It could be an offense from somebody and they, they, they just let it fester inside of them. They allow the adversary to get into their minds and that their, their thinking is just, oh, man, oh, oh. And they're always questioning their identity and they're always seemingly struggling with this and, and struggling with that. And 
I mean, if I want to magnify pain, I can easily magnify pain. Can anybody say amen? amen. I mean, it's just, if I want to magnify how tired I am, I can magnify. I mean, it's human nature. We can think ourselves right, right into a hospital bed. And it's the same way with faith. We're able, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. If, if I lack the ability to bounce back, I recently had to do some uh, toilet repair, and uh, the 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 uh, flush valve has a a gasket, and as time went went on, the the gasket got crushed, and the form of the gasket wrapped around the 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 plug that where the water you know goes don't goes uh, down you know in the in the water tank, and I'm trying to figure out why is this thing doing this all of a sudden, and it was hard. I mean, you almost needed two hands to flush the toilet. It was. But what was happening is the water pressure created a suction so that that gasket that ended up getting crushed, it couldn't rebound itself. It didn't have the elasticity, if you please. And it was wrapping itself around so that the flush valve was locking itself down right into it. So when you went to flush it, it was like... And finally, by the grace of God, we figured it out and bought a new gasket and put that in. And you could take one finger on that flusher and go. Psh. But I tell you that to tell you this, we need to be able like that to not allow life, to not allow circumstances, to not allow people, to not allow situations to get so embedded in us. It's just so hard to feel God, and it's so, man, you know, I just, where'd my joy go, and, and where's my, where's my peace? This, this world is so crazy, We're, oh. It's time to change your spiritual gasket if you're struggling in this hour. Because, honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. Right. Romans 12, 3, Paul says this. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly. Notice that word, soberly. When I think of sober, I'm thinking of somebody that's not intoxicated. I'm thinking of somebody, you know, somebody's not drunk. Somebody that's not oblivious to their surroundings. Some, something that someone that hasn't allowed their mind and their senses to be deadened by alcohol or any other thing and you can reverse that forget the drugs forget the alcohol life itself can cause us to lose that sensitivity of spirit can deaden our senses if you please where before we know it you know you you know you're you're uh, going along with things you shouldn't be going along or uh, allowing things to affect you that shouldn't affect you and it, it comes so subtly you know it, it before you know it it's there and it's like you've got to wake up and shake yourself you know sometimes it feels good to just find yourself a quiet place with jesus and and oh lord you know you, you, ever, you ever have those moments in life where we say you know what maybe i need to get back to some basics that just happened to me maybe I just need to man where's where's my first love where did it go do you see where I put my first love because this this it can become so common we can become so robotic in our faith because we know how to pray we know the lingo we know the word we know we're familiar with one another and it, and Jesus can can become so common to us we don't even recognize anymore whether he's in the room or not and we're living in the last days and if Satan, all he's doing right now is he's throwing up smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors, getting your attention here, getting your attention here, using this person, using that person, using work, using relationships, using people, using all kinds of stuff out there. And if, if Jesus is just a common person to you, or if this you don't have that fire burning in your soul, it's going to be very, very hard for you to even be able to tell reality from truth God has dealt to every man the measure of faith so I looked up that word measure in the amplified the amplified 
Classic says, the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. The common English Bible says, God has measured out a portion of faith to each one of you. The Passion Translation says, honestly assess your worth by using your God-given faith as the standard of measurement. Not by what I feel, not by what my home life is, not by whether people like me or not. Nothing, nothing external affects my self-worth of what He declares I am, who He declares I am. The world didn't give this to us, folks. That's right. And the world shouldn't be able to take it away. Circumstances shouldn't take it away. Health or well-being shouldn't be able to take it away. Nothing. Nothing because this, this body one day is going to turn to dust. And so according to Thayer's Greek lexicon, that word measure means an instrument for measuring. Graduate, gra graduated staff for measuring. A measuring rod. So it literally means a measurement. At our, uh, at our grandchildren's house, uh, they have this uh, gigantic, I call it a ruler, that stands about so high. How many remember those things? You know, and every now and then they'll stand, okay, make sure your head's straight now. No, no, put your feet down. No. But you can see through the years the little pencil marks that they put on as the, as the child has, has grown. You and I should be able to do that in the spirit. We really should. You should be able and I should be able to look back there and see things that bothered me, see things that affected me that either brought me down or stole my joy or made me complain or whatever that was contrary to the word. I should be able to look at that and say, man, that doesn't bother me anymore. I remember when I came to the faith. I mean, people wanted to come up to me and give me drugs after I had come to the faith. And I was in debt with my I, I was in debt for the for spending money I didn't have to support my habit. Now all of a sudden it's here, here you go, have this. Hey, you can relate. Hey, want a drink? Come on. You, what, what, what are you what are you talking about? Devil's no fool. If he finds a button, he's gonna push it. John three thirty four. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. What? You just read that God gives every man the measure of faith. And now you're reading this and it says, For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him? That's confusion. Is the Bible confusing? Glad you asked that question. According to Vine's Complete Expository Dictionary, it says the Holy Spirit is imparted neither by degrees nor in portions as if he were merely an influence. And if there was, if there was a foundation statement of, of what the Holy Ghost wants us to understand tonight is that the Holy Ghost is not merely an influence in our life. It's not just something that, that we uh, kind of car, car, ugh, compartmentalize. It goes on. He is bestowed personally upon each believer at the time of the new birth. When you and I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when we walked through the door of the new birth, we were given that measure of faith. But it's not supposed to stop there. Now it's easy, you may look at me and I may look at you and you might say, well, boy, man, Brother Horny, you, you got some strong faith. And I might look at you and say, man, you got some weak faith. That's not, that's not, you can't measure what we're talking about here. But we have to ask ourselves, is the Holy Ghost, do I really understand the Holy Ghost in my life? Is it just a time of talking in tongues? Is that my proof that I have the Holy Ghost? What is the Holy Ghost? What part does the Holy Ghost have in my life? What measurement do I have? What measure do I have? Do I have a spiritual ruler I can stand up against and God can draw the line? And say, good job, good job. Good. No. No. 
God doesn't want to be just a measurement in our life. His spirit is not supposed to be just a measurement in our life. But you'll know the measurement that you're at when you're able to rebound quickly. When life compresses you into a corner and you're able to bounce back like the Michelin man. Or when you seem to be out of form and you just got things stuck to you and you're able to release them and allow, allow that form to come right back in again. Let me read it to you again if in case you forgot. The ability of an object or material to resume its normal shape after being stretched or compressed. And there's a whole lot of compression going on right now. A whole lot of compression. And if the scripture says, and I know I mentioned a lot, if the scripture says there's going to be a great falling away, friend, I don't want to be in that line. I don't want to be part of those that are going to fall away. I don't want to walk away from the faith. I want to, I want to be able to add to my faith. Romans 1.17 And I'll read this in the uh, Amplified. Romans 1.17 For in the gospel a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith. Th think if you never had those challenging moments in your life, would you have strong faith? See, God uses our life's experience to bring us and take us from faith to faith. In the Gospels, the righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses more faith. I was listening to Brother Cisco again. And he talked about in his early days of training. Of course, if you knew his, his father, his father was a prophet, mighty man of God, mighty in the, in the gifts of the Spirit. And he said when he was in that season of, of training, he said, man, the adversary struck me with such fear. I, I, I'd be fearful at night and, and, and worried. And then just he's, he really went through the ringer. And he said, once he was able, by the grace of God, and some of the things that God did in his life, he said, once you enter into that dimension of the supernatural, it, it's like rocket fuel. It's, it's like, <laughs> you never go back. Because you know, but you know, but you know, but you know, but you know how real this is. And this is where God is trying to bring you and I. To that dimension of the supernatural. Where we can also say like the, uh, like the first century church. Where, where they, didn't, they didn't consider anything to be, uh, be their own. They just laid it at the apostles feet so they could meet the needs in the church. And they turned their world upside down. And, and they, just, they were just a, a powerhouse uh, fulfilling the command of the Lord. So faith arouses more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Praise God. Stand with me if you would. You know, the Bible talks about I believe it says something about having a song all the time in your heart. Remember that? Uh, can't think of where it is right now. I know he puts a melody, a melody, even a song into our heart. But the Bible says in everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I mean, we ought to be the happiest people this side of heaven. I know things get tired. I know the pressure's there. I know work doesn't always create an environment of happiness and joy and peace. But it can't touch the inside of you. 
even when things seem like it just isn't going to work. It's just it's all falling apart. We can stand with faith and say the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We don't have all the answers yet. I don't have all the answers yet. I know I just feel like something good is, is about to happen. And I want to be a part of it. And I believe you want to be a part of it. So we keep on keeping on. If we fall, we get back up. If we get compressed, we spring back. We just keep on keeping on, Sister Pat. Because quite frankly, there are no other options. There is no other option. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my God, we thank you so much, Lord, for the resilience that you give to us. I thank you for the measure of faith that you've given to us, Lord. As we add to our faith, as Peter said, add to our faith virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temperance, temperance, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, love. We want to abound in our faith, Lord Jesus. In your name, Father, I pray that you would take this word and plant it into our, in, into our being, my God. Help us to understand. Truly, when you walked as the man Christ Jesus and you spoke to that fig tree, the disciples were amazed the next day when they saw it all dried up and you so simply said to them, same thing can happen to you if you don't doubt. Bind the spirit of doubt, Lord Jesus. Help us to be aware of the seducing spirits that would come around and try to steal our faith and try to blind us from the reality of who we are, of what you've called us to be in your kingdom. It's for your kingdom, it's for your power, it's for your glory, Jesus. And we pray that you would be honored and sanctified in all that we put our hands to do. In Jesus' name, praise God. Lord bless you tonight, in Jesus' name.